Choosing the right computer processor for your needs is one of the key choices when shopping for a new PC. And here's why it's pretty important. The computer processor is a chip in your computer that helps it run. It's known as the Central Processing Unit, or CPU, and every single computer has one. Think of the CPU like the brain of the computer, telling other components, such as the disk drive, RAM, or GPU, what to do. Turning up your speaker volume, opening an app, telling the screen what to show you are just some of what CPU does. And there's lots of options to choose from, depending what you use your computer for. Most manufacturers distinguish their processors with a common number system. The latest mid-range processors are great for everyday use. They'll help you stay productive and multitask with ease. Lower numbers may be more budget-friendly and let you easily browse the web or work on documents. Higher numbers give you more power for editing videos and photos or playing graphics-intensive games. It's important to think about how you'd like to use your PC before choosing the processor that meets your needs and budget. Hope that helps. So you're trying to pick your next PC. Yes, you'll need to think about graphics. The part of the computer that handles graphics is known as the graphics processing unit, or GPU. And every single desktop or laptop computer has one. A GPU is also called a video or graphics card, and it's a specialized electronic circuit that's designed to accelerate graphics and image processing. So the GPU helps with things like games, obviously, graphics, effects, videos. GPUs are important for all kinds of work, like video editing or design, working with architectural files, even machine learning. There's two types of GPU, all right? There's integrated and there's discrete. Integrated GPUs are built into the CPU. This allows laptops to be ultra thin, less expensive, and power efficient. They work well for some gaming and light video editing or working with photos, and they're great for most people. A discrete GPU, on the other hand, is separate from the CPU, and it's either plugged into or attached directly to the motherboard. Discrete GPUs are larger and they consume more power, but they help the computer run intense graphics, effects, and video. So if you do any photo or video editing or design work, or if you game a lot, then you'll want one of these. And there are a lot of discrete GPU options that range in price and performance. So you're gonna wanna research your requirements before choosing a discrete GPU. And you can usually find information about specific app or game requirements at the developer's website. I hope that helps and good luck on your search. Okay, so you're picking on a new PC. You're gonna wanna think about how much storage you need and what kind of storage drive makes the most sense for you. Okay, so first off, what's an SSD? SSD means solid state drive. It's the most common kind of storage drive in PCs today, especially laptops. And alternatively, HDD or hard disk drive is what likely came in previous PCs you've owned and is still sometimes used as a backup drive. It stores data on spinning disks. Because an SSD doesn't have moving parts, it's more durable and reliable and also smaller than a typical HDD. This makes it quieter. It allows for laptops to be super thin and lightweight. They also draw less power, which saves you a bunch of battery life, which is nice. Another thing you wanna think about is how much storage space you might need. For example, 128 gigabytes is sufficient if you primarily use your PC for web browsing or light schoolwork. However, for an average user, 256 gigabytes is a good starting point. If you work with 4K video, graphics, or you use large files, you probably want more space and a fast SSD. SSDs are more expensive for large amounts of storage, while HDDs are cheaper. Then again, if you save your files to the cloud and you don't download games or have a bunch of applications installed, you know, you're not using a ton of local storage right on your PC, then you might not necessarily need a large storage drive. It's up to you. I hope that helps.